What is up, my peepholes? This is your guy, Kali, and welcome back to Budget Tubing. Now, today's episode is going to be pretty special because this is our first versus battle, and I've been wanting to do these ever since I launched this series. And for today's showdown, I'm going to be having the Blue Snowball Ice go up against the Tonor Q9. And what better way to start this than to talk about the similarities between these two microphones. Now, I've already gone in depth about both of these microphones in their own dedicated review videos, which I will link in the description down below, as well as link as cards when the time is right. Now, what better way to start this off than to talk about the similarities between these two microphones? They are both side address USB cardioid condenser microphones with a 14 millimeter condenser capsule, though I should point out in the case of blue microphones, they do claim to use a custom attenuation in all of their mics, so take that as you will. Now, as for the differences between those microphones, those start as soon as you see the price tag. The Blue Snowball Ice has a manufacturer suggested retail price of $50, and as of the recording of this video, the Tonor Q9 is currently selling online at $54. Continuing on with the differences that you don't see immediately, let's talk about the recording settings. In the case of the Blue Snowball Ice, it records at 44.1 kHz and 16 bit, whereas the Q9 clocks in at 48 kHz at 16 bit. And for those of you playing at home who have absolutely no idea what those numbers mean, the common terminology is CD quality and DVD quality audio, respectively. Though I should point out that neither one of these qualifies as studio quality, despite the fact that Blue makes that claim, because at least in the common terms, studio quality starts at 24-bit as opposed to the 16-bit both of these record at. Now let's move on to design. In the case of the Blue Snowball, it has a plastic outer housing available in a wide range of colors and a very unique footprint. Now, in my previous video, I did talk about how the Blue Snowball Ice has a decent amount of heft, though they are fudging those numbers. On the base of the Blue Snowball Ice, you have a very heavy metal mounting bracket, which I should add is threaded at 5 eighths of an inch, a very common microphone threading. There's also a metal plate which runs the entire circumference of the blue snowball ice that I want to say is about one quarter of an inch thick. And while yes, it does serve as a grounding point for the various parts of the microphone, it's obvious that they're mainly using it to add weight and therefore implied value to the microphone. Now, in the case of the Q9, it goes for a more traditional cylindrical style design and rocks a full metal housing, though I should add it is only available in black. Now I am partial to the cylindrical housing, mainly because that means that I can reach over to my shelf and grab any number of generic accessories from mic bags and cases to wind puffs and whatnot, and they'll work with it. In the case of the Blue Snowball and Blue Snowball Ice, you need to get something a little bit more custom made for those purposes. Now as for how you're going to mount the Q9, as I just stated, generic accessories do work, so if you have a friction-based mount that works with any cylindrical microphone, you should be set. Also, at the base of the mic, you have a little bit of threading. This is threaded at M22X1 and works with stands made for external and recessed threads. It uses a bit of a hybrid design. Also, I shouldn't have set this down, you have a rubberized gasket here on the base, which is not only going to give you extra hold when using said mounts, but it will keep them from scratching the body of the microphone, which is a nice bonus. Now let's talk features. In the case of both microphones, you get a single cardioid pickup pattern, though if you were to go out and get the more expensive original Blue Snowball, you would get an omnidirectional pattern as well as a minus 10 decibel pad. That being said, there are no more features on the Blue Snowball Ice. However, in the case of the Q9, it actually has two of my top three microphone features of all time. While it is lacking my number one feature, which is the ability to monitor yourself, it does have number two, which is on-device gain control. In this case, it's digital gain control with 15 settings, and it's controlled via this rocker switch on the front of the microphone. And coming in at number three, if you do a long press on either the plus or minus side of the rocker switch, you are able to mute your mic. Yes, it's not muting in real time with a dedicated button, however, it is still perfectly functional. And it comes in handy when you're playing a game that decides to launch without push-to-talk for added realism. At least that's what they claimed. 
Now, the last thing I want to talk about before I move on to the audio test portion of this video are the accessories that are included with both microphones. This is probably where you're going to see the most value come out of these packages. And in the case of both of these microphones, you do get a USB-B cable, so I'm not going to show that. Instead, let's talk about the things that are unique to each mic. With the Blue Snowball Ice and the Blue Snowball by extension, what you receive alongside your USB cable is a tripod. Now, admittedly, this is not the original tripod. I bought my microphone in a beaten, battered, and bruised condition and decided to fix it up myself, but fortunately, I had a very similar tripod just lying around. Now, at the beginning of this video, I did call this the Tonor Q9, but I'll admit this is a relatively generic microphone sold by multiple companies. However, Tonor does have a unique package that I feel elevates this microphone and makes it their own. But before I talk about that package, let me show you what you get alongside your USB cable if you were to buy the Q9 from any of the other manufacturers. A generic tripod with a hard mount. Now, I didn't actually go out to buy one of those other Q9 packages in order to get this. I just happen to have the exact parts they include lying around. Now, let's talk about the Tonor package. And to do that, I actually have to pull this shot out of it. Now, instead of a tripod in the Tonor package, what you end up getting is a freaking boom arm. In this case, it's pre-threaded at 5 eighths of an inch, which means you don't have to get one of those pesky adapters. You also get a shock mount, which is one of those generic cylindrical microphone accessories I was talking about earlier. You also get a wind puff, which is not to be confused with a pop filter, despite the current trend on YouTube to move away from pop filters in favor of wind puffs because I hear all of your plosives even when I'm not wearing headphones, and that is not a good thing. And speaking of pop filters, you also get one of those, so please use it. And I have to say, this is not bad for 54 bucks. Anyway, let me clean all of this up and hook both mics into my PC so that I can do a side-by-side -side audio comparison. And welcome to Audacity. Right now I'm recording using the Blue Snowball Ice with the digital gain set to 100% and my audio capture is set to 44.1 kHz at 16 bit. I'm about 4 inches away from the microphone to take advantage of the proximity effect, but don't worry, as always, I'm using a pop filter. Now, all I'm really doing right now is capturing a little bit of sample audio for you to listen to before I move over to the Q9, and then we're going to compare the patterns of them in real time using an audio spectrum analyzer. Won't that be neat? And welcome to a different version of Audacity. This is what happens when you don't properly update your software across multiple computer systems. Anyway, I'm recording using the Tonor Q9 with a digital gain setting of 40% and an on-device gain setting of 10 out of 15. My audio capture is set to 48 kHz at 16-bit, though to be perfectly honest, I have no idea if you'll be able to tell the difference between the two once YouTube is done crunching this audio. I'm about four inches away from the mic to take advantage of the proximity effect, though I will be done doing that by the time I move on to Fritcher. I don't want to color the audio spectrum analysis with the proximity effect. That would be cheating. Anyway, the only additional effects I'm doing to this audio is adjusting it for easy listenability. I don't think I'd want to blow your eardrums out during the audio test portion of this video. Now, let's move on to a very complicated shot where I try to compare the two charts in real time overlaid on each other. This is going to be interesting in editing. And welcome to Fritcher. Now, if I have everything set up properly, you should be seeing the chart from the blue snowball ice at the top of the screen and the Tonor Q9 at the bottom. I'm about a foot away from each microphone to make things fair, and the audio you're hearing right now is being captured using the blue snowball ice, mainly due to the fact that the last thing you heard was the Tonor Q9, and I wanted to shake up your acoustic memory a little bit. Now that I've done that, let's switch over to the Q9. Anyway... Getting into the actual numbers, these charts are remarkably similar. I mean, it does make sense due to the fact that both microphones claim to be responsive between 20 and 20,000 hertz. Though I will point out that there's a little bit something extra sitting in the 50 to 80 hertz range on the Q9. I'm going to attribute that to the noise floor that is mentioned in the manual, which sits at about negative 80 decibels. So while you do see an indication of it on the chart, it's not really that big of a deal. You can either eliminate it with a noise gate or in post. You're going to get something similar with the blue snowball because when I stop talking, I've noticed there is a little bit of response through every part of the audio spectrum, and I'm attributing that to my computer fan in the background. It takes a while for this chart to die down, so I'm not going to make you sit through that. Anyway, 
I do hope this little silly test shows you that these microphones are actually fighting on a pretty equal level. So it all comes down to what you want out of the microphone when it comes to making your final decision on the product. If you're looking for a known and trusted name and a lot of different colors of microphone, the Blue Snowball Ice might not be a bad investment. However, if you want something that will get you more for your money in the form of accessories that you can use on other microphones later on down the line, you might want to look into the Tonar Q9. I'm going to go ahead and link both microphones down in the description of this video, and you can make your choice on which one you want to get for when you start your channel. And if neither of these catch your interest, don't worry, I've got plenty more reviews and head-to-heads to come. But for the time being, I just want to say, until next time, this is your guy, Kali, signing off.